Fade out one. Fade in three. Pizza Flicks Television Division presents... Fast Man. Besides, the war is over. Yeah, look, this no gent, way, uh, let me sleep. This gent wants to make a deposition. He says he saw a murder. Wants to get it on record. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, God. Gent. Murder. Deposition. Ah, oh. Oh. The uh, Major says if you give me the deposition, I'll write it down for him in uh, shorthand. Now, uh, first, we'll, uh, we'll uh, fill out some blanks. Okay, Count, spill it. Thank you. This palace used to belong to me. Yeah? The whole shebang? Early in the war, when the fascists were in full power, I had to give this property to General Fortunato. Yeah? Uh, actually, Fortunato used to be a stable boy here. But uh, he rose by devious means until he became one of Mussolini's favorites. And after that, a general. Uh -huh. Now look, Duke, just give me who got killed, who killed, and how come you've seen it, huh? Now first, uh, we'll have the place, and then the time, and then the respective parties. The place. Yeah. Do you know that under this palace, way under, there is a catacomb? A catacomb? Yeah, I know. There's a wine cellar about a quarter of a mile deep. That is right. Uh, you keep forever going down a long spiral stairway. Every few steps, the corridor leads out. Lined with vintage wine. <laughs> and they keep that out of bounds for us. You, you know, after searching for three years for the whole of Italy, I can pronounce it the greatest wine cellar in the I know it time. used to be. Uh, okay, now, Count, uh, place of murder, huh? Well, the catacomb is uh, at the bottom of the spiral staircase. It is so far down that it's actually under a riverbed. Now, look, Duke, I know this is important to you, but all I need is just five words to fill in the blank. For thousands of years, my ancestors have been buried in that catacomb. And down Your there... Your Royal Highness, I'm telling you, baby, I don't need all that. All I need is just five words. Way under there is where the crime took place. Ah, that's better. Murder, catacomb. Next, time of murder. Time. Now, what do you say, Prince? Let's blow your nose and get on, yes. huh? Time of murder. When General Fortunato took over this palace, uh, I must say first that by that time he had acquired so much power that he could force me to let him marry my youngest and dearest sister. Yeah, why the heck did you let him? Why'd you poke him once? <laughs> you Americans are so charming and so simple. I didn't poke him one, my dear boy, because at his call came stormtroopers and torture chambers. Oh. Okay, Count. Time of murder, huh? Time. When General Fortunato married, after he married my, daughter, my uh, sister, he uh, took over this place and he let my wife and I stay on. And we lived uh, in a small suite over the stable. Yeah, nice guy. This opened onto a terrace that commanded a fine prospect. Every noon, the Countess used to have uh, breakfast there. I used to work in a war office and my sister was in a hospital. But the General and my wife had more leisure. Good morning. Has your husband gone to the office? Yes, I believe so. 
Doesn't he usually take your wife to the hospital on his way? My wife didn't go this morning. Oh? I told her not to. We're leaving for Rome. Coffee? Thanks. May I? Don't you think you might button your shirt? Doesn't whet my appetite. We're flying in 15 minutes. Perhaps you could have one of your colonels to deputize to comb your hair for you in the morning. Do you know what that means? What are you chewing on? It means I won't come back. Not until the war is over anyway. You will keep amused. Without you. Why not? Am I part of your pleasure? Come to Rome. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Couldn't you spend the winter in Rome? Where should I live? We shut up our house there. I could get you a luxurious apartment. I dare say you'd steal it from someone if I'd let you. You could help me in Rome. As my sister-in-law, you could entertain brilliantly. It would be very good for me. You have a wife, haven't you? Oh, she's uh, very simple, just like her brother. Understand, it would be good for me. And it would be good for you. You could have Rome at your feet. I think you'd better run along now. Give me an answer. We've been neighbors here. It's not been too unpleasant. But Rome is different. Rome is public. What if I won't be married? Answer me. What if you won't be married? General, I find your stable boy's mind very dull this morning. Bon voyage. Yeah, and, uh, and then? Exactly one year later, the general sat in the same chair. By that time, my sister had been killed in an airplane accident, and my wife was living in Rome. On April 12th, the general came roaring up from Rome in a Bugatti of mine he had previously taken over. He invited himself to dinner. And half an hour later, the murder took place. <laughs> Are you finding yourself game? Stork! Two storks nesting in the chimney. And one glass window when an old lady shook her hand at me. I uh, regret very much that I have to serve you myself, but uh, since the war, you know. Uh, who cares why we have that cellar? Who wants food? Our eyes met. I knew why he had come north. Either to kill me or to arrange for someone else to kill me. I really didn't care. I had come to a point where life or death held no preference. In that warm April sunlight, the red wine glowed and gurgled like blood. And I gave up. What hope for me? He was Iluch's darling. He had a secret police of his own. Actually, I suppose he thought he was being very decent to come in person. He might have sent his agents in the night. Well, my friend, what do you hear from your wife these days? She's in Rome, isn't she? How should I know? You're the husband. Surely the husband knows of the wife and her whereabouts. She spent the winter there, I believe, trying to secure a divorce. Do you have a cigarette? Yes. A handsome case. From an admirer. Uh, well, now, uh, any success with that divorce? No success. And how is that from your point of view? Well, I regret it. It was always a misalliance. A divorce would keep me and would save me from living in fear. He? Yes. I often think to myself, supposing that a person of great power would want to marry her. A divorce is impossible, therefore this person of great power could only marry her if I were dead. <laughs> you don't mean that you fear for your life? Every moment. <laughs> come now, come. <laughs> oh, what romance you, you fill your mind with. Not at all, no. She has always been attracted by power. And she attracts power. The end is inevitable. <laughs> 
You know, that is my third bottle, waiting for you to cook that nasty little meal for me. I regret that it is the best that I can offer. Well, it is a long, long life for both of us. And a happier, happier conversation. By the way, apropos, that reminds me. Um, last week, a black marketeer brought me a cask of Amontillado. Amontillado? Impossible. That's exactly what I said. In these times, impossible. Must be Sherry. Huh? He swore it was Amontillado. Sherry. Nobody can get a cask of genuine Amontillado these days. Well, not even I can get it. I had my doubts. Still, I bought it. Throw your money away. I'm having Lucchese come over to taste it. You remember Lucchese. Excellent palate. Lucchese? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that old fool doesn't know wine from water. <laughs> well, of course, he hasn't got your palate. So where is that Amontillado? Oh, no, no, I'm afraid it would be too much trouble. Now, uh, let me taste it. I tell you, let me taste no, it. No, no, I couldn't disturb you, really. Why, where is it? Is it in your vaults? At the very bottom. <laughs> All the better. I will sober up, climbing down. No, no, General, really, I, I couldn't disturb you that Why, way. what's the matter with you? You seem to be afraid. You shouldn't be afraid going down with me. Oh, it's not that. It's what, then? Well, uh, it seems a pity to drag you down there into those depths and those darknesses with this beautiful sunny day. No, I'll have Lucchese. Oh, get your torch and we'll go. But do you have the time for me? Don't you have to go back to Rome? Time for you? Of course I have. I have the whole afternoon to kill. After you. No, no, General. Please. No, after you. I said after you. In just a moment, we'll see the second act of this evening's suspense story. Well, of course, this is the month, you know, when we celebrate Columbus Day, so I thought for our little intermission story this evening, I'd use a couple of characters named Ferdinand and Isabella. Well, in this case, Ferdinand is a fella, and Isabella is a very crafty canine. Now, it seems that Ferdinand and Isabella were seeking new worlds to conquer at the Columbus Circle Dog Show, but Ferdinand's old boat was giving Isabella such a rough ride that she was ready to abdicate. So then our canine queen took command of the situation and said, I'll pawn all of my jewels for a set of those new wide gap Autolite resistor spark plugs. And darned if she didn't. In fact, she even threw in one of her best dog bones on the deal, too. <laughs> but seriously, friends, your car will give you smoother engine performance with leaner gas mixtures at idle and low throttle speeds when you get a set of Autolite resistor spark plugs with a revolutionary new wide spark gap setting. Now, what makes this wide gap practical is the new exclusive 10,000 ohm Autolite resistor. There's one built right into every Autolite resistor spark plug. And believe me, that's really important. For a long time, automotive engineers have known the advantages of a wider spark gap, but it took Autolite's ignition know-how to make the wide gap practical. From the minute you install wide gap Autolite resistor spark plugs in your car, you can count on quicker starting at low temperatures. In addition, the wide gap will give you smoother engine performance with leaner gas mixtures at low speeds or when your car is idling. Naturally, because you can use a leaner gas mixture, you'll use less gas. And another thing, the wide gap Autolite resistor spark plugs actually check radio and television interference. So, why don't you take advantage of all these wonderful features? It's very simple. All you have to do is see your nearest Autolite dealer tomorrow and have him install a set of those wide gap Autolite resistor spark plugs in your car. Well now, would you like to know how our canine queen Isabella made out at the dog show after her smooth ride with those new Autolite resistor spark plugs? Well, sir, she took first prize, best in the show. And the well-deserved blue ribbon she was awarded had some real blue ribbon advice on it. Doggone right. You're always right with Autolite. Now, the second act of A Cask of Amontillado. 
I had trapped myself. Of course he was anxious to taste the Amontillado deep in the vaults. What neater way could he be rid of me? I think I must have mentioned the wine on purpose, because I was hopeless. The least I could do was to give a little help to the inevitable. As we kept climbing down, 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 gradually a curious peace filled my heart where the panic had been. A resignation came over me, almost an eagerness to be at the bottom and done with it. Are you coming along all right, General? Coming fine. Thank you. You tell me when you want to rest, or we still have a long way to go. I need a drink. That's what I need. I need warmth. Damn, damn down here. <coughs> No, I mean Medoc. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's better. <sighs> As a matter of fact, we've gone down far enough. Let's forget the Demontiado. No need to go any lower. <laughs> it's silly. Let's make a finish of it right here and now. Sit down, dear fella. Need a minute to catch my wind. Now sit down. You know, I owe you a great deal and I give you credit for it. Even when I was your stable boy, you saw I had a hand to run things. I was always aware of a great eagerness on your part, that is true. So you gave me money to go to school. Three years, and I was back here and manager of the whole place. Now look at me. Look at me now and... <coughs> I must say, General, you have always been able to forge your way ahead. Do you want me to tell you the truth about yourself? Well, this is as good time as any other. You know, when you made the biggest mistake of your life... I think I'm beginning to find out. I will tell you. When you didn't join the party, that when... <laughs> If I hadn't get in on the ground floor, I wouldn't have been the boss here now over the whole town, would I? No. My you... dear Carl. If you hadn't been the boss, I wouldn't have let you marry my sister. That's right. <laughs> but, hey, hey, you are catching on. That's right, because, don't you see, if I hadn't married your sister, I wouldn't have had the money to buy my way in Rome. And if you hadn't married my sister, she wouldn't be dead. What do you mean by that? Well, if you hadn't been married to her, she, she wouldn't have been in the plane with you. Oh. <laughs> That's different. I see. Well, can't help accidents. Matter of fact, your sister will never ride for me. So simple, just like you. I need a woman of ambition. Someone like my wife? Yes, if you say so. And then you really would have reached the top, huh? You know, life is nothing but a lot of steps. Either you go up or you go down. And it seems that I have to go down. 
count. That second lasted a year. I knew his revolver was on me. I thought of my sister. I thought of the lovely April sunlight that was far above me. I thought of all the tenderness of life trampled on in the name of the dictator state. Suddenly, at that last breathing moment, the ridiculous thought struck me. Why am I so weak? Why don't I kill him? Count, count! Where are you running to? Come back here! I command you! Come back here! lying around. It's, it's only my family, or I should say, uh, our family. Yes, I thought I ought to uh, clean the vault out before they steal me. It was an accident. It was an accident. And, you, and your wife, she came after me. She came. I swear it. Would you like to be buried with my ancestors? They wouldn't dare shoot me. If you don't back into that vault, I will. They would find me and they would kill you. They would torture you. Back into that vault. Wall. We 
reach up to your hands till you feel the chains. Wisteria was in bloom, covering the rooftops below me. I sat for half an hour on the terrace, enjoying the sunlight and the general cigarettes. I disappeared. I went into Switzerland. And then I came back and I joined the underground. And always I say, when the war is over, I will tell my story. And may justice be done. week our story of suspense will be the serpent also be sure to listen to suspense each thursday night on the radio this is cbs the columbia broadcasting system